Hello, 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 everyone. Uh, welcome back to our Medit in Germany webinar. And again, as you can see today, we have three experts for you. And um, so first of all, sorry, I forgot to tell my name, Jean-Marc Janan from Make It in Germany, together with my colleagues, Katarina Obanchik, also from Make It in Germany. And we want to say thank you to our three experts, uh, Mrs. Brown, Mr. Ulava Shatil, and Mrs. Tillman, who accept to join us and is going to, to, give, to give us um, later on uh detailed information about recognition in healthcare professions but before we start it i just will, will let my colleagues uh, katarina give you um two advices uh, about technical advices and after that we are going to start uh, the webinar okay thank you very much and welcome to our webinar uh, my name is katarina obanchik and i'm here to uh, help you in the chat um make sure you have selected computer audio so you can hear us uh, real good if you have technical problems you can write your question uh, in the chat in the user panel i will try to help you there uh, don't be confused only the moderators can see your question none of the other uh, members of this webinar can see your question and at the end of the webinar we will answer all your questions regarding this today's presentation you can also download uh, the presentations under handouts and yeah i think now your everything is settled so um i think the stage is yours john thank you very much thank you katarina for the advices so um i'm going to introduce to you first uh, the, the agenda for today in the first part of that introduction i'm going to give you a brief overview uh, about uh, the topic of recognition and in the second part i'm going to explain to you what is make it in germany so what is the hub uh, what is make it, make it in germany which website and uh, which kind of information you can find on this website and in the third part i'm going to <clears throat> to let uh, mrs tillman um start with uh I give us brief overview about the website recognition in germany and uh, in the fourth part, uh, I'm going to, to let the expert of uh, the <clears throat> state SBA with uh, our guest to today, and we are going to explain in details and details all information you need in order to get uh, your your um, your diploma in the healthcare profession recognized in Germany. And in the last part of the presentation, we are going to uh, talk about. Um, uh, and, the, and the last part, uh, Katarina is going to read us all the questions you, you, you asked during the webinar and then we are going to answer it at the end. So be patient during the webinar, you can just ask your question and then at the end you are going to, to answer that. So introduction, so um, I wanted to talk about uh, um, the brief topic of recognition, because today we are not talking in general about recognition. So I want to make this part last. I'm going to give you like a small information, all you need to know. You may know in order to work in Germany in certain um, kind of uh, professions, you may need a recognition. And so if, if you need a, a visa in order to, uh, to move to Germany, to start a work here, you may also need a recognition. And today we are only talking about the provisions in the healthcare sector. So if you need other information about the recognition, uh, let's say uh, how to, rec uh, to get your, your university degree for, uh, for example, recognized in Germany, you can just switch on our website, make it in Germany in order to get all the information in detail. So, um what is make it in germany uh, before i start in what uh, with this question i'm going to uh, ask you a little question just for us to know if you already uh have been in contact with this website just for for us to have a brief overview so this question is going to pop up in front of you mm. wait a minute And uh, you just have to answer with yes or no. I give maybe 30 more seconds. Oh. 
One, two, three. Maybe five more seconds and then um, oh, that's interesting because uh, actually that's that's a lot of people who actually have never heard about Make It in Germany. I mean, I can see here for the six percent of people are not familiar with your uh, website. And uh, yes, um, I'm going to give you a, like a brief overview of the website because today is not about Make It in Germany. It's not about um, the website. We just want, I want, I want, uh, I want to give the platform today to the expert so that they can explain to you everything you need to know. So let's switch back to my presentations. And um, not So what is Make It in Germany? So what Make It in Germany is the, the German government information portal for all patients regarding uh, the immigration of qualified professionals in Germany. So uh, all the people who are actually interested in moving in Germany and they are going to find on Make It in Germany all the information they may need. I'm sorry, actually I was. Exactly. So the portal starting in June 2012. And uh, it's available in four languages. So we put the portal is in German, in full version, in English, in Spanish, and in French. And we also have brief overview in four other languages as Arabic, Portuguese, or you can just find like brief overview what the portal is offer as information. And till now we had uh, over 29 users worldwide who are visiting our uh, website. And um, Yes, as I'm always saying, this website actually the website you should check out if you are interested in uh, in working and living in Germany because you are going to find all kind of information on this website that is actually helpful for you. It can also be information about getting ready in your home country, but uh, how to get a visa, all information about the visa regulation, but also information about uh, what to, the first thing you need to do when you get when arriving in Germany, so this kind of uh, information. So take your time and visit our website. And uh, yes, the website is also um, offering binding information, so you can be 100% sure that the information you find on web, uh, our website are actually true. And uh, we also have uh, information about job vacancies. So, and uh, the, the biggest advantage of our job vacant listing is that uh, the firms, uh, the offer that actually are our web and our website uh, for firms that are actually interesting in hiring qualified professionals from around the world. That's actually a pretty good thing to know. And we also offer personalized uh, advices. So if you need a lack of personal advices, you can just contact us via our website. And uh, we also uh, 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 we also have give information for German firms. Because as you may know, there are a lot of German firms that actually need uh, suffering for, for this shortage of skilled workers. And uh, we are just giving all this firm in Germany information on how to hire um, qualified professionals from around the world. So, as I may say, I think at the beginning, the kind of information you can find of Make It in Germany, so that's information like how to search uh, for a job in Germany, entry and visa regulation. We also have a quick check, but also a, a, a pretty interesting tools where you can assess your opportunities in Germany. We also have information about recognition. I, I, as I said in the beginning, and we also have information about how to learn German, success stories of immigrants who came to Germany and who explain uh, everything of the experience uh, till they arrive here. And uh, maybe it's also very interesting information. We have, uh, we have a, 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 a explained a video on the topic of recognition of foreign qualifications. So for the people we, who maybe are not from the healthcare sector, but are still interesting of, um, 
or listening to our webinar, maybe at the end of the webinar, we can, you can just check our video on YouTube and you are going probably going to find very helpful information. So that's what actually from my part, I'll say thank you again for listening to me. Now I'm going to let now Mrs. Silman take over. And after that, the experts of the field of the uh, uh, SPR are going to uh, take talk forward, forward about the recognition director sector. So thank you, thank you very much and uh, see you at the end of the webinar. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Jean-Marc. Hello from my side as well. And yeah, my name is Leonie, Leonie Tillmans, and I'm working for the website recognitioningermany.info. And before I start my presentation, I also have a similar question to you, like Jean-Marc had. And I want to know, do you know the website recognition in Germany already? So as before, please just type yes or no. And I can see a lot of people know the website already. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh. I'm waiting a little bit longer. Okay, I think most of you have voted. So almost 70% know the website. I think now you can see that as well. Um, okay, that is just a sign for me um, how to, to how deep to go in my in my presentation about recognition in Germany. So I know some of you know it already, but still maybe I can explain you a little bit more about it and um, to give you some hints and tools um, and to show you some tools we have at uh, recognition in Germany. Um, so now I'm going to to show you my presentation, which does not work. Ah, okay. Here we go. Um, can you see the presentation? I hope you see the full slides. Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> now I'm here. Okay. Yes. As I said, I'm working for the Federal Institute for Vocational Education and Training, and um, we published the information portal recognition in Germany. This is the official information portal of the um, German government. And um, sorry. Something is, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just have to take a minute. Just switching all the time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's the official information portal of the German government for the recognition of foreign professional qualification. And we also published this information portal in 2012 since the Recognition um, Act uh, came into force. Since then, we have the legal basis here in Germany for the whole recognition recognition procedure, what we are talking about, especially in healthcare professions today. And since then, we have this um, information portal and we can we are giving you some informations about recognition in Germany. So in contrast to make it in Germany, we are going into depth um, about the topic of recognition and make it in Germany has like the the whole frame around it about immigration processes and um, we have detailed information about recognition and we also offer this detailed information in uh, 11 languages so also for example in, in French and Polish and in um, Arabic. Um, I, you can see that here on left hand on the slide. And later on in, uh, in the webinar I will also show you the, the website live and um, show you one of the tools.
So what do we offer? And just to explain you how this website works, because we have three target groups. We actually have um, you, the skilled workers who are looking for, for recognition in Germany. Um, and we're giving you a lot of information about how does the procedure work? Where do you have to apply? Uh, what is the legal basis about it? And we also have another target group, the professionals themselves, for example, consultants or competent authorities where you apply to. So this is like the, the middle column for professionals you have to enter then. And we also offer some information for employers. Yes, and I already said we have uh, general information about recognition and you can also find some detailed information about its legal basis. Um, you're going to hear about this as well, especially for healthcare professions later on, um, of course. Um, but if you want to read about it afterwards, um, you can find that on our website. And um, we also offer you some counseling services if you um, need some guidance. Um, we, we can tell you if you're still abroad and not in Germany yet, who to call, who to, where to send an email to. Or if you are already in Germany, um, then you also can find the next place where you can go to and get some personal advice. Another, um, yeah, another tool is maybe a glossary. If, if there are some foreign words you don't know um, and wh what does it mean? What does recognition mean? What is a regulated profession? You can find that on the website as well. I can show you later on. And very important, um, and this is what I'm going through later in the webinar, is the recognition finder. This is a guide to all professions and recognition procedures here in, um, in Germany. It uh, looks like that and you can type in the um, recognition, uh, the profession you are um, seeking the recognition for. And um, we're going then through all of the steps of the recognition process and you get all the information um, and especially the information where you have to apply to because this is very complex in Germany. It's always another competent authority for another profession and um, also depending on the place where you want to work. Yeah, so this was a brief overview of, um, of our website just to give you some hints where to find um, special information afterwards. And if you want to contact someone from us from Recognition in Germany, um, I would ask you to um, use the contact forms on our website. And um, yeah, and there you can give either feedback on the portal or you can ask your um, special questions, um, your individual questions. And um, we always try to help you in your individual case. Um, yeah, so um, thank you for now. And as I said, later on, I will show you the recognition finder with a special example after our other experts explained to you um, the whole process of recognition in healthcare professions. Um, so, um, I'm not sure whether I can be heard right now. Okay, very good. So, um, as my colleague mentioned, um, I'm here with Jana and I'm Devin. And uh, we are from the Service Center for um, the recognition of foreign professions. Um, Devin, just one mm -hmm. short notice. The first slide of the presentation is not showing. Okay, thank you very much. So here we go. No, it's uh... ah, it's not the first slide. Here we are. Yeah. <laughs> Can you Perfect. see the slide of our presentation now? Yeah. So okay, very good. Yeah. But um, it's the presentation mode. It's not full screen. Okay. I think now yeah. you can see the first slide <laughs> of our presentation. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot and sorry for that. Um, but before we dive into the presentation, I would also like to take the opportunity and pose a question to the audience. Um, as uh, my predecessor would like to know whether you already heard of us, if you have heard from the Service Center for Professional Recognition. Um, I hope that you can see um, 
the question and you can briefly ask with yes or no. And I will give you a few seconds. Okay. So a few more seconds and um yeah so most of the people haven't heard of us um i'm not sure whether you can see the result of the survey okay very good and another question since we are very curious um i would like to know um whether the audience um what what the audience consists of um so what your professions are i'm going to ask you that questions what your qualification is so just give us a brief overview what your background is you can um Pick the right box and so that we know where you come from. Okay. So it's as we expected that um, most of you have a nursing background. We got a few physiotherapists here and that's pretty good um, because we are going to work with that. Okay, that's that's it for the beginning. Yeah, here you have the overview, very nice. Okay, so back to the presentation. Um, yeah, as we mentioned, uh, we are going to talk about the recognition process. Um, for healthcare professions and um, yeah, uh, I'm going to hand over to you, Jana. Yeah, a very warm welcome from my side too. Uh, my name is Jana Braun and I'm a consultant as well at the, at the Service Center for Professional Recognition. And um, yeah, as we already said, our key topic today is going to be professional recognition with a special focus on healthcare professions. Um, please be aware that um, due to the time frame that we have today, which is only one, one hour, one and a half hours, uh, we are going to focus on non-academic healthcare professions in Germany, um, which are mostly nurses, midwives, physiotherapists um, and medical assistants. We won't be able to um, discuss the, the procedure for doctors in detail, um, so this won't be part of our presentation today. But please don't worry, I know we have some doctors uh, with us today. Um, I think you can get some relevant inv information as well today. And of course, after this presentation, uh, we are open for questions and you can also register with our service center to get your personal consultant and um, all the relevant information as well. Um, so to get an overview of what we're going to talk about today, I would like to present the agenda. Um, so first of all, because before we're going to dive into the topic of professional recognition, um, we also want to present our service center because um, as the, the survey showed, uh, a lot of you haven't heard about us yet. And it's not a surprise because we're still a quite new department. Um, so we're going to give some further information who we are, what we are doing and how we can help you. Um, then we're going to talk about uh, regulated professions in healthcare. What does regulation mean? What are the consequences? Um, we're going to explain the different steps of the recognition procedure in detail. And we will also explain the differences between EU and non-EU certificates, um, which is especially important in nursing and midwifery. And last but not least, we're also going to um, give you an, uh, yeah, more information about required language skills and also some helpful websites. This is where we're going to see the recognition finder in detail and most importantly, of course, also our contact details. If you say, okay, yes, after this presentation, I want to go for recognition, then you should definitely register with us so that we can help you in the procedure. Yeah, 
um, as Jan has mentioned, we um, have recently been launched. Uh, we are fully operational since last year only. Um, there has been a, a slight renewal of the immigration law. I'm going to explain that a bit later. But um, it is important for you to know that our aim is to guide and support you, uh, you as a skilled professional from abroad, um, in the course of seeking a professional recognition. So we want to provide transparency, transparency, uh, transparency sorry, in the recognition process, which is not always easy in Germany, um, as Leonie has mentioned before. Um, another important thing for you to know is that we are not a competent authority. We don't pursue the recognition um, for you. We are there to advise you, to get you in touch with the right authority and to guide you through the process. Um, here's a photo of our team uh, when we launched our service in the last year. Yeah, so first of all, first question that everybody always asks is, okay, what does professional recognition actually mean for me? Um, so professional recognition means that your foreign training, um, your education, your university diploma, your certificate is going to be compared with the German reference qualification. Um, this can sometimes be a little bit difficult because sometimes we don't directly have the matching reference qualification, but in most cases, um, it's quite uh, obvious, for example, if you did a nursing training abroad, then very likely the right reference qualification in Germany would be Gesundheits- und Krankenpfleger, Pflegerin. Or if you did a training abroad as a midwife, then the reference qualification would be Hebamme. So this is always the first step that we have to find this reference qualification, which uh, it exists in Germany, and then your training it will be compared uh, during the professional recognition procedure. So, next question, who actually needs recognition? And there are two main reasons. And the first reason um, yeah, is, uh, is uh, mostly related to healthcare professions as well, because it's the permission to work in a regulated profession. So, in this case, whether you are coming from a country within the EU or you're coming from a country outside of the EU, you ne definitely need recognition if you want to work in one of those regulated professions. A lot of them are in healthcare and what a regulated profession like means in detail, this is something my colleague Devon is going to explain in the next step. Um, the second reason why somebody uh, would need um, the, the recognition of his or her professional uh, qualifications is would be to get a visa for job search or for working in Germany. Um, so if we imagine we have a nurse, she's coming from the Philippines, then in this case she would need a professional recognition because she needs a visa to come to Germany and she also needs professional recognition because she wants to work in a regulated profession as a nurse. If we take the same example, we have a nurse that is coming from France, then this person would also need the professional recognition not to get the visa, because France and Germany, you can just uh, come over, but to work in the regulated profession. Um, so, as you can imagine, um, regulated professions can be found pretty much in every country. So. Um, if you are a lawyer, a teacher, um, so if you come from a non-health sector, there in almost every country there is a requirement um, to have uh, a regulated access to this job. Um, so this means you need a legal requirement, a legal base in order to work in this job. And um, this applies to mostly all healthcare jobs in Germany. So as Jan has mentioned before, uh, certain recognition procedure is absolutely um, necessary for the uh, recognition of your job. So when it comes to healthcare sector jobs, um, the recognition of course is required for nurses, for midwives, physiotherapists, but also for the so-called assistant positions in the medical field. So if you're 
uh, laboratory assistant or if you assist in operation theater and the field of radiology, um, you also have to pursue a recognition process. So whether you are European or non-European, it is uh, absolutely mandatory to go through this process. So now that we um, cleared the basis for the recognition procedure, we would like to give you an overview of the um, different steps in this procedure. As you can see on this slide already, there are a lot of steps. It can be a quite long and um, yeah, sometimes also a little bit complicated procedure, but please do not worry. Um, we're going to describe the different steps um, in this presentation and as I already explained to you, after this presentation um, we're going to give our contact details so that you can register with our service centre and we can guide you in this procedure. Um, so, as I said, there are seven main steps um, for the procedure from the identification of the competent authority over the preparation of required documents the submission and the assessment of the qualifications and the decision as well as the adaption measures and the professional license at the end. Um, this professional license is what my colleague Devin already explained, that in a regulated profession you have um, yeah, laws that, um, that regulate the access to a profession and in those cases you usually need this kind of professional license to be allowed to work in the regulated profession. Um, so now we're going to start with the different steps of the recognition procedure and my colleague Devon is going to start with the first step, which is the identification of the competent authority. Yes, um, before identifying the right um, authority, um, it's of course uh, necessary to um, see or to evaluate if you have the right profession. So. Um, uh, Jana touched this topic briefly. So, uh, do you actually have the right to apply? So, um, Leonie's introduction of the Anerkennungsfinder Anerkennung in Deutschland, uh, or might have given you an idea how this works. So, it is necessary to identify your reference position at first. So, it is obvious in the field of nursing, but for example, you could have learned physiotherapist in your country of origin. And um, later, it can be found out that in the course of recognition, it might be seen uh, rather as a massage therapist. So um, the identification of the right profession is the service that we provide, but which can also be done with Anerkennung in Deutschland. And the next step, of course, is the identification of the competent authority. So. As you may, might know, Germany is a highly federalized country, so each state has its own competent authority or authorities for um, the different prof procession, uh, professions, and each state follows a slightly different approach or has its um, jurisdiction um, distributed uh, slightly different. So it is important to know where you want to work and to identify the right competent authority. There are around 1400 different competent authorities for all jobs on earth. Um, but no worries, uh, our aim is to uh, guide you through this process. And um, this is one thing that you need to know that uh, you might have an idea where you want to work and you might know about the specifics there. Um, the next step would be the preparation of uh, the required documents. So once you have identified um, the right authority, the right competent authority, and you are willing to submit your application, just uh, check uh, the requirements for the documents because the process takes time. The recognition process usually takes up to four months, but there are certain competent authorities in some states who need six to 12 months. And you can speed up the process when you 
submit uh, complete documents. That means there are certain requirements for your copies uh, when it comes to the certification. So some authorities demand um, uh, a certification of your of your um, uh, documents when they when the uh, certification has been done by the German embassy, for example. The translation um, also applies to certain rules that can be seen on, on the website of the competent authority. Usually translations have to be made by certified, certified translators and uh, a list of these translators can be found, found on the website of German embassies. So it is absolutely necessary um, to, to submit complete documents. It's uh, what we always hear when we work together with these authorities that uh, we need that they need those documents uh, complete. And yeah, so I would I would like to add something to this point. Yeah, of um, um, uh, so for the documents, as my colleague already explained, so every uh, competent authority has its own list of documents, which is available on the website. Um, so this is why it's so important to, ch uh, to choose the competent authority before preparing the documents, because there might be differences in the requirements of documents. Some competent authorities only accept translations from uh, German translators in, based in Germany, some also from the embassies, as Devin said. Um, so this is also like a point where we can um, help you, that you get in touch with us, and um, we can guide you where to obtain um, the, the documents in the right format. Yes, and um, um, then once you have submitted your documents, um, an assessment, a thorough assessment will take place. And um, it is usually a, pros a process where there takes place a, a sort of measurement of the duration and the content of your training. And there's also an assessment of your work experience. And these two fields lead to the result of um, the assessment, the uh, evaluation of your training. So, um, it is, I think, important for you to know that um, the training system in Germany is entirely different to most other countries uh, because uh, healthcare professions are usually non-academic. Um, as you might have heard, Germany has a dual training system. So that means um, it takes place not in a university, but it takes place um, uh, right on the job, 50% on job and 50% in the school. That means um, there's a distribution of an equal amount of hours between theory and practice. So that's the vocational training system and that leads to differences between your training. It doesn't mean that it's better or here or that it's better at your place. It's just slightly different and therefore uh, the assessment of your qualification might be or might result in a statement of deficit. Um, another reason that the assessment can result in a statement of deficit is that uh, training curricula uh, lessons include non-related aspects to health, such as social sciences or law studies. Um, I think this is pretty common in other countries too, but just for you to know, um, another reason for a statement of deficit could be that healthcare in Germany traditionally follows a different approach. That means that basic care methods are used here, such as mobilization for those who can't mobilize themselves, washing or dressing, um, which in other countries is might done by people who have just uh, followed a basic training and even when you have done a four full training you know three years course you still be involved in basic care methods and then of course um, the technical equipment in Germany can be different than in in your country but I think that's uh, quite an obvious uh, point 
So after the yeah. um, assessment of equivalence, you have two possible, uh, sometimes three possible outcomes. Um, so the first possible outcome is that there is no equivalence at all. That's something we won't hope for because this means that your um, application will be denied. Um, so this is like the first um, possible outcome, but the second uh, and the third possible outcomes are the ones that are, um, yeah, more common, might, uh, one might say. And so these are the two that uh, we will explain because this is also something those two outcomes will allow you to proceed further in the process. Um, so after reviewing your case, the competent authority will send you a letter in which the result will be communicated. Um, so if you if your application has not been denied, you can either receive a complete equivalence. This is what everybody hopes for. So the competent authority says, okay, your training is completely equivalent to the German training. And after um, proving B2 German skills and your personal aptitude, um, you can receive uh, the professional license to work in the medical, um, in the healthcare profession that you learned. Uh, so what does personal aptitude mean? It's um, your criminal record and usually also a medical checkup where a doctor, a medical practitioner has to check if you're uh, yeah, a fit for the job. Um, the second, uh, in this case, the third uh, possible outcome would be in partial equivalence. Um, so this would mean that, okay, when uh, comparing your foreign training to the German um, reference training, um, there still have been some differences that have been um, yeah, recognized. For example, what my colleague already explained, that maybe you worked with different uh, technical equipment or you did more theory than uh, German trainees usually do. So in this case, um, you will have to do an adaptation measure, which can be done in Germany. Uh, there are two possibilities, and my colleague will um, explain them in detail after this slide. And then after successfully completing the adaptation measures, um, you will, yeah, this is why I put the arrow, you will come to the same point that after um, proving your B2 German skills and the personal aptitude, you will also be able to receive the professional license. Um, so then uh, you will be allowed to work too. From our experience, we have to say that, um, especially for training that has been obtained outside of the European Union, a partial equivalence is more likely, um, not as we already explained, because the training is better or, or worse than in Germany, um, just because there are so many differences in the technical equipment, also in the, for example, the the, government regulations that the profession is based on um, or in the, um, the training system, or if you do more theory or, theory or practice. Um, so this is why it's um, yeah, most likely that you, you might get a partial equivalence. But as we said, don't worry, there's the possibility to do adaptation measures in Germany to get the full equivalence. And we will now take a lo closer look at those adaptation measures. Yeah, it's um, definitely for you good to know or important to know that it's absolutely okay if there's a partial recognition and that you have to do a certain sort of adaptation measure or post-qualification as, as we mentioned it here. So there are pretty much two possibilities uh, or two approaches that you can follow. Um, so once the statement of deficit from the competent authority says um, you have a partial equivalence of your job, you can either do a knowledge test or an adjustment course. So the knowledge test um, is um, a so-called stipulated test. So it is not based um, on the outcome of your assessment of the deficit of statement that has been about you by the competent authority. It is, um, so to say, regardless of the essential differences that has been noted. So there is not a thorough comparison of both training systems. Uh, it doesn't take place. Um, it doesn't take place based on the deficits that have been mentioned. It is a test that consists of an oral and practical examination, and therefore. It is highly recommended to take preparatory classes. So another possibility is the so-called adjustment course. Um, this is a course that is 
aiming at the differences that have been noted in the assessment of the competent authority. So um, it is usually a course that is designed um, to the deficits that you have uh, designed to substitute those deficits and it is usually split therefore between theoretical and practical classes. So um, in order to attend such a course um, usually there's a profound a profound comparison and evaluation um, takes place from the competent authority when you when you um, apply for this course um, you usually do it when you uh, apply for the recognition and when you say you want um, to take place in such a course the competent authority knows okay we have to pursue a profound comparison of the uh, training methods um, so it is also good to know or important to know that uh, usually there's a, a, each state has a certain infrastructure of institutes that offer courses exactly for these target groups. So that offer adjustment courses for physiotherapists or nurses um, and that there are institutions um, that are willing to help you in order to find these courses. And um, yeah. There's a difference between European and non-European countries also. Jana is going to um, say something to this field. Yeah, so um, as you now take a look at the recognition procedure in detail, we will also like to mention that there are some differences between EU and non-EU certificates, especially in nursing and midwifery, um, because um, according to a EU, EU directive, um, there are some professions that um, can benefit from a so-called automatic recognition. Um, so we have the medical practitioner, dentist, veterinarian, pharmacist, and architects, and most importantly for this presentation, uh, nurses and midwives and obstetricians. Um, so for those professions, as I already said, they can benefit from an automatic recognition, but please do not get it wrong. It does not mean that you do not have to apply for recognition, um, but only that you still have to submit your documents, but that you will be granted the full equivalence directly. So when you remember the, the steps that we described before, once you have been granted the full equivalence and you have proved your German skills and your personal aptitude, then you directly get the professional license. So for those uh, who have obtained an EU certificate um, that respects the requirements in the EU directive, um, then you, can, uh, you will not need to do any, um, any post-qualification but you will just have to um, prove your German skills and your, profession, uh, your personal aptitude to get the professional license. And even if you have not obtained a certificate as nurse or midwife, um, also in some other professions, um, for example, physiotherapists or also the medical assistants, um, you can benefit if you have obtained an EU certificate, because when you remember the knowledge test that my colleague um, just presented, um, normally, you're gonna be uh, examined about all the topics of the German training, but if you have obtained um, your degree in a European country, part of the EU, uh, European Union, um, then you will be only be tested um, on the differences that have been um, yeah, evaluated. Um, so you will uh, not be tested on the whole content, but just on the areas where the competent authority has decided that there are substantial differences. Yeah, Jana just um, mentioned um, the language requirement, which is usually B2. Um, so this is also probably very interesting for um, you as our audience. It is um, usually it is possible to submit your application um, without knowing German, but it is not something that we recommend because um, once you submit, submitted your application, um, it takes a certain time, four to 12 months. And um, once you receive your result, um, you most 
certainly or usually have to um, apply for an adoption, uh, adaption course um, or, you know, when you received your statement of deficit, you have to visit a school that is willing to um, to um, give you a lesson in order to to um, to receive a full recognition. And these schools usually require uh, B2 skills. And of course, when you have a full recognition, for example, and you will uh, you usually will apply for a professional license, and therefore B2 is also mandatory. So um, usually it is highly recommend recommendable to uh, achieve B1 or B2 once you submit or before submitting the application. So um, the language certificates that are required here are um, good, of course, then there's TELC and the Austrian language certificate USD, and there's a pretty new one, ELC. So um, everyone has to go to the pain to um, learn German before starting that whole process. Um, so why is that the case? Um, it is uh, necessary in order to um, to have a contract with a school and in order to receive, for example, a residence title. Um, there's that new German immigration law that I have talked about in the beginning, uh, the German Residence Act, which has been renewed. And there is section 16D uh, when it comes to the partial equivalence of your training. So what does that mean? Um, as I mentioned before, um, there are certain requirements to receive a work visa to come to Germany. And the requirement is, of course, your qualification from abroad and the uh, uh, written recognition, the statement of deficit uh, from the competent authority that says uh, this person needs to attend a training method. So then you need a contract with a school that is willing to give you this training. You need an evidence, which is usually a contract. Um, and then once you have these two things, a contract with such a school that usually demands B2 of German language and uh, the uh, statement of deficit from the, com uh, from the competent authority, you can get a residence title that says that you can stay up to 24 months for training measures. Um, so now it depends on the specific design of the training measure. So if the practical elements in this training um, method is uh, about 50%, then the consent of the employment agency uh, is required. Otherwise, it is not the case and even a secondary employment is possible. So these are the requirements when you come from a non-European country, um, the statement of deficit from the competent authority and a contract uh, with a training school when it comes to partial equivalence. So Jana is going, um, this has been all very theoretical, so Jana is going to specify this uh, in form of a case study with a nurse. I was still on mute, so I hope now you can hear me. Um, yeah, so to do a little summary, uh, some, yeah, to summary of what we just discussed, um, we're going to do a case study with a nurse. We just choose nurse because it's one of the professions that, uh, yeah, most applicants that um, contact us as holding. But you can also say it's a physiotherapist or midwife or medical assistant. Um, the procedure is the same. There are just like some slight differences. Um, so we imagine we have an applicant, um, the profession is nurse, it doesn't matter if it's a woman, man or diverse, and um, this profession is regulated in Germany. This means whether this person comes from the European Union or not, um, he or she must obtain a professional license in order to be allowed to work. 
So um, as we heard, to get this professional license, you do not just need the language skills and the professional aptitude, but you also need this proof that your training from abroad is equivalent to the German training. So next step would be you have 16 different states. So first of all, you have to choose the state that you would like to live in so that the person has to choose. Um, let's say that person wants to go to Hamburg because it's a city that is close to the ocean and um, yeah, very vibrant. Um, so the next step would be um, to take a look at the website um, to see, okay, what documents do I have to prepare? Um, prepare those documents, translate them, get certified copies and then submit them to the competent authority. At the same time, that person would also um, keep on visiting, attending German classes to improve the German skills and then the assessment of equivalence um, would take place. Um, depending for this nurse, um, let's say it's a nurse from a non-European country, so there won't be any automatic recognition. So um, that person is very likely to um, do an adaptation measure first and then to prove the B2 skills and the personal aptitude to get the professional license. So this would be a little summary of the different steps. Of course, in the whole procedure, um, we know from our experience there are a lot of questions that are going to pop up. Of course, maybe you have a family that you, you would like to bring to Germany, um, or you would also have questions about living in Germany, housing, how to get a job offer, um, how to really structure the procedure. Um, so this is also where I would uh, really like to motivate you to get in touch with you because you also work very closely with our different departments. So we also have a team, uh, our migration support center that can advise about working and living in Germany in general. And we also have a department um, the, for international placements so that can help um, job hunting um, because um, yeah I know that it can be a life-changing uh, process to come to Germany to ask for professional recognition and Germany is in high need um, of medical and uh, yeah, healthcare professions um, so we really encourage you to get in touch with us to plan this process. Um, some useful tools um to um, get in touch uh, with with um, the right support and advice institutions are displayed here. So when it comes to us, Make It in Germany would be uh, the right website to get in touch with us. Um, uh, we cannot be contact, contacted directly, but you will be channeled forward to the Make It site and um, the recognition germany portal um, usually that has been introduced uh, before is um, also a good source of information for you when it comes to research when it comes to the identification of the reference position and when you uh, come from the following countries that i have displayed here like uh, algeria brazil and so on uh, I highly recommend to you to get in touch with the Pro Recognition Centers. Um, they are usually embedded in the Chambers of Commerce, um, as far as I know, and they also uh, do actively support you in the recognition process. And once you're in Germany, um, the best contact point is definitely Netzwerk IQ, who give you advice about the recognition process, but also about the post-qualification methods that I just mentioned. That means training measures and qualification um, uh, processes that have to be done, funding when it comes uh, to uh, the questions on how to fund your costs of living in Germany. Um, but I would like to take the opportunity um, to show you how Anerkennung in Deutschland info works. And I think at that point, Leonie is going to take over here and show you in the context of recognition, how to make use of the Anerkennungs, Anerkennung in Deutschland info.
Yes, exactly. Thank you very much. So this is where I'm jumping in again, as we announced in the beginning. And uh, now you heard from my colleagues already how the whole process worked. You saw the chart with the, with the steps you have to go. And um, yeah, especially if you remember um, in the beginning, one of the first steps is to find the correct um, reference profession and the correct um, competent authority where you have to apply for recognition in Germany. And this is the tool uh, which Devin mentioned already, uh, which helps you a lot is the recognition finder on our website. And um, I showed you already in, in our slide how it looked like, but um, yeah, to show you how to use it, uh, we're going there and I give you a short live presentation of it. And this is the starting page, the web page, recognitioningermany.info or in German, Anerkennung in Deutschland.de. And um, yeah, and you have to enter here on the left side because you're the one who is interested um, in recognition um, yourself, you're a skilled worker. So enter the web page here. I also gave you the deep link in my presentation to the recognition finder where you can go straight to the recognition finder and this is then the the starting area the website of this skilled workers area and um, yeah as you can see you find you have the menu here you can find the recognition finder i'm going there soon and um, all the me other menu points here so what i said before some infos about counseling and um, about the legal basis and also you can read about some success stories here also in the healthcare sector um, about people who successfully um, did this recognition process. And this is also what I mentioned, um, the glossary where you might um, catch some keywords um, if you don't know the definition of this foreign or, and specific words of the recognition process. But as I said, I want to, to, to show you the recognition finder. Um, so we can click here or you could just have used the, the quick start, which was there just right be, um, yeah, beneath the, the picture. And um, so I think I will just continue with the, um, with the case we just had. Um, so you can type in your profession here, either it's uh, um, a yeah, physiotherapist, um, you can find this here, for example, and then select it. But I now choose the nurse because we had this in our, in our case. Um, the general nurse um, and so of course you might need some consultancy some counseling service in the beginning just to be sure that really the nurse is the reference profession um, you want to apply for for recognition but um, we also give you some information here about the the German um, profession and the qualification so you can read um, this here and see if this is correct for you um, if this suits Okay, so I'm not going through all the lines um, and to read everything through, you can do that for your individual case afterwards. But um, yeah, what needs to be considered is the next step and you have to answer a few questions and we give you all the information. What also my colleagues told you already, it is information to know if you're from the EU or not, because um, that depending on the profession means you need the uh, recognition or not um, mandatorily. Um, so imagining you're not coming from the EU and also not from one of the um, yeah, specific states where there are some extra regulations but um, yeah, you're coming from another third country, maybe from Colombia, for example, and you want to work as a nurse there and you're not living in Germany already. So you require recognition. And as I said, I'm not going through all the lines. You heard that in the presentation already. And um, it gives you a lot of hints also where you can find help again. And then you also have to answer some um, special questions regarding the pre-requirements because it's always, of course, necessary that you have this qualification, that you have this um, state certified qualification from your country. You cannot just come to Germany with some informal qualifications without a certificate. So you have to um, say yes to all of these questions. Otherwise, you cannot apply for recognition. So you can apply for recognition. And this guides us to, yeah, to the place of work, which is always necessary to find the um, competent authority because we heard there about, yeah, we always say one, about 1,400, but for all of the professions um, in Germany, for um, the nurses, I can tell you, I think it's 
22 like for each state we have 60 federal states in germany so for each state one and in one state they divided us in different areas so it's uh, yeah 22 but which one will it be in hamburg we had it before hamburg close to the ocean um so here we have a short summary and we also tell you okay if you're not quite sure with, with the information we gave you already you can call the hotline the hotline will guide you to my my colleagues uh, devin or jana um so this is what is told here and also some faqs what is happening in the counseling but if you want to go to your procedure in detail and want to um yeah maybe to apply on your own uh, without counseling but as we said we always recommend uh, get some personal uh, counseling service but you can already read what is happening in the in the procedure and besides um, besides um, your citizenship is also um, important to know where your qualification um, is gained so this is for example refers for example for the um, to the automatic recognition Jana was talking about before this is why we're asking this question here and for example you are from colombia but you gained your qualification in spain so this is why we have the second question here and choose that button and finally we are in the end of the um yeah recognition finder and this is this um the competent authority in hamburg for the reference profession general nurse or nurse and um, yeah you have all the contact details here you have the links to the to the website and to the information page of the competent authority and um, you can also see here again it's a regulated profession you really need the recognition to to work here and also yeah just you can go through take your time after after the webinar or later on if you're really planning recognition go through the information so you're already informed before talking to to consultants before talking to um to the competent authority we have information about knowledge of german about costs we also uh, have the documents listed here and um, normally if they have an application form or if you know about it we also have the link here to the application form which you can use then to the competent authority um, so i think this is a really useful tool um, yeah to to find the necessary information also my steps what is happening there this is what my colleagues explained sometimes it's very individual of each federal state you can read that here it always depends on the on the profession um and but in general it's what they said it's either directly equivalent or um you need to take um yeah take part in adaption measures and we also have the links to the legal basis of this specific profession you chose Yes, so this basically are the steps of the recognition finder. I just run through a little, but um, as I said, take your time and very important, the competent authority where you have to um, apply to. But um, of course, your, your consultants, if you, if you take advice before, will help you with that. Thank you very much. So I hand over to Devin and Jana again. Yeah, thank you, Jana, for this um, overview. And um, as Yuni has mentioned before, um, this is the way to um, contact us. Um, so um, there's this hotline where, as I mentioned before, you will not reach us directly, but you will be channeled through to us. Um, there are the email addresses where you the email address would be recognition at arbeitsagentur.de, where you will be um, also guided by our team. Uh, you may have to submit um, your CV and fill out a form, and then we can help you with your further questions. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it from our side. Yeah, so um, thank you very much for your attention and uh, for your time. And I think we'll now be ready to take questions. Hi, yeah, thank you for your uh, helpful input. Um, unfortunately, you can't see my camera. Um, 
but I think you can see Jean-Marc at least, and I hope you can hear me while reading the questions. So I think we are starting now because we have received some. Um, the first question is from Anna. I'm a medical laboratory scientist, but according to the Anna Kennan webpage, my degree in Germany is medical laboratory assistant. Will this affect in the recognition of my degree and its level bachelor degree? Or is it just the name that changes? Thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I would go to answer this question. Um, so in fact, actually, it is true that um, medical laboratory assistants in Germany um, are trained in a vocational training. So um, it's not very common to, um, or it's not common at all to do a university training. Um, so this is something that you have to be aware of, that if you um, apply for recognition in Germany, um, you will be recognized on the vocational level. Um, so this might also um, affect um, maybe some uh, some tasks that you are used to doing in your home country that maybe um, that do not belong to the reference profession in Germany. This is what we explained in the beginning that um, sometimes the reference profession that exists in Germany doesn't 100% match what you learned in your home country. So you always have to find like this balance to to find the right reference profession. And what is important too is that um, if you studied laboratory science in a bachelor degree, uh, you have to make sure that in your home country you have the professional license or you're allowed to work in a medical lab laboratory. Because this is very important if you want to apply for recognition as a medical laboratory assistant in Germany, you really, your degree in your home country has to allow you to work in the medical laboratory there. If it's not the case, if it's more like a general uh, laboratory degree, you can maybe work in a laboratory for, I don't know, food or for cosmetics, then maybe it's not the right reference profession. Um, so this is where we explain that it's like a whole process to find the right reference profession and um, to see if this is the fit. But once it's found, it can imply um, I, I, yeah, that you will be recognized in a profession that is a vocational training in Germany, although you have an academic degree from abroad. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say something uh, about it. And uh, your question is very interesting because it's uh, really important uh, as uh, um, if you have a vocational qualification or a university degree. In order to come to Germany, this question is really, really important. Because if you want to come, if you want to work here in Germany, with a university degree, you may not need uh, to make uh, to go through the whole uh, recognition procedure. Since uh, I if this uh, profession is not um, regulated, <laughs> thank you. If this profession is not regulated in Germany, you may not need this uh, recognition procedure. You may only need uh, to use uh, an or in this uh, individual. Uh, It's really, really important. I do want to study in your home country. What will allow you to work in Germany as I do, it should be a vocational qualification or a university degree. It's really important that you, you make the difference in order to get your visa, but at the end, it's going to, to play a really, really big role. So that's what uh, all I wanted to, to add to this. Okay. Um, thank you. The next question is again from Anna. If I'm a German citizen, but I didn't study my degree in Germany, do I still need to apply for a recognition of my degree? Mm, so this is actually what uh, Jean-Marc explained. Um, so as you obtained an academic degree, if you just want to work in an, on an academic level, maybe as an advisor for laboratories, um, then you will um, not need any proof or from Anna Dean or any recognition because you can enter the country um without a visa but if as we already explained if you want to work in the regulated profession of medical laboratory assistant then definitely you will need um the recognition it doesn't depend on your nationality it only depends on the profession you want to work in in this case yes thank you for the clarification um the next question is i'm a master of science He's physiotherapist from Albania, living actually in Düsseldorf. I got my B1 Deutschprüfung. Can I apply now for the recognition with B1? And later on, I sent the B2 certificate. Where should I apply? Um, 
I think the question. Does my master diploma gives me extra credits not to have practice hours? Um, have you uh, heard? Oh, should I yeah, read I it again? I think it was a little. I think it was a little interrupted in between, but maybe we can we can clarify. So maybe uh, I can I can just answer. I can the read first. it again. Um, <laughs> yes, if you can, uh, you can answer right away. Uh, so the first question is: um, Can I apply now for the recognition with B1 and later on send the B2 certificate? He's now yes. based in Düsseldorf and from Albania. Yeah. Yeah. So. For me, it's a clear, a clear yes, as Devin explained also before that um, you can actually um, hand in the, um, the B2 certificate then later because for the um, application itself, it's not necessary to, to um, for, um, hand in the knowledge certificate. Okay. Yes, um, the, the thing is that um, you can hand in your B2 document later. Um, but once you, for example, apply for professional uh, license, um, it depends on the competent authority, they might demand B2. Um, it, it depends on the competent authority, or I think in this case, in Düsseldorf, um, it is usually, I'm not sure if it is necessary to have B2 then at that point. No. So what is important to know is that from competent to competent authority, there are different. Some have this kind of combined application form where you apply for the assessment of equivalence and for the professional license at the same time. It's just like one form. And those competent authorities often in their um, application form, they already put the B2 certificate because it's like this kind of combined application form. You just fill it once for both types. Um, but, for example, for the case of Nordrhein-Westfalen, um, they really have like these two separate procedures where you first apply for the assessment of equivalence and then for the professional license. So definitely the B2 is only mandatory for the second step, so for the professional license. So this is when you have to submit it. And even the competent authorities who do this kind of combined application form, they put it in the form, but there's no legal basis that you have to submit the B2 certificate because the legal basis just says you need it for the professional license. We know a lot of competent authorities already require a language certificate just because from their experience, they know, okay, in most cases, they don't get the full equivalence directly. They will have to do a course and you can't do a course in a hospital or in a nursing school without speaking German. But it's like, normally it should be like a two step procedure, first assessment of equivalence, then professional license. But we have like this combined application forms. But um, yeah, so it, it's a yes. <laughs> You can submit it with a B1. Long answer, short. <laughs> yeah, thank you um, for this insight. Um, and does my master diploma gives me extra credits not to have practice hours? Um, so, uh, and Devin, you want to answer or Leonie or should I? I mean, I think everyone can answer that probably. It's, I mean, in, in, in my view, it's like um, we just don't know how that master exactly looks like. Just because it's a master it doesn't have to mean that the assessment will come to the conclusion, okay, it's a master, so you don't have to follow uh, further steps. Um, it, it, is, it, it depends on the design or the content of your master and um, the results of the assessment. So, I mean, you can even have a bachelor degree that is like fully equivalent to a German one and um, there's no need for practical hours. But um, since we mentioned the differences that usually uh, the training systems in, in, in the countries have uh, to, towards Germany, um, it might be the case that you have to do some practical hours. So. Um, as we mentioned before, it does not mean that your master was particularly um, bad designed or something like that, but it just doesn't. Oh, sorry, I don't know what happened here. Um, it just uh, can be possible uh, to come to a conclusion now that 
um, it can be possible that you have to uh, do some practical hours in the course of uh, after receiving your statement of deficit. Ah, okay, thank you. Um, the next question is, as I have seen in the curriculum of the German training, there is usually a part on German law and healthcare system. Is that something that is typically resulting in adaption measures? Mm, it can be part, but not always. So um, we still also have cases uh, where somebody has done the training abroad and has, for example, really a lot, a lot, a lot of work experience and it can still result in a full equivalence. Um, but you really have to know that it's a very individual procedure. So every application, the competent authority is really going to take an individual look at it, um, take into consideration what you studied, where you worked in the second step, which further training you maybe also did. Um, so we cannot really give like one answer this is, that is valid for all because it's always an individual um, decision. It could be one of the factors, but um, maybe it's also compensated. Uh, by other experience. Um, so uh, I always say, even if you have like the same training as your friend, you worked in the same hospital, there can be still differences just um, because of maybe what you did before, what further training you did. So um, it's always an individual decision of the competent authority after evaluating your documents. As Devin said already, like a master, we don't know how it looks like. So they really, they look at the content, they look at the duration and then the decision will be taken. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, the next question is, I, if I want to go to Germany, study the language, while application for recognition is in process, what type of visa should I apply? Um, Can, should I read it again? Yeah, please. Uh, if I want to go to Germany, study the language while the application for recognition is in process, what type of visa should I apply? Um, I, don't, I, was, I think you may apply for a visa for other language certificate because there, are nothing, there is nothing to do with your application itself. So there are two different things. So if in, in the time you are waiting uh, for, your, for your result, of course you, you can apply for a visa in order to, to come to Germany to, um, to learn the languages. There is such a visa and uh, you can go on our website, make it in Germany, you can find information uh, about it, how to get such a visa uh, for learning German in Germany. And you can just go and work, uh, make it in Germany on our visa section, you, you will have, you will find uh, any kind of information that you may need for such a visa. But one thing is also clear, uh, after you will get your result, um, for your uh, for your recognition procedure. So if you want to come back to Germany uh, in order to work here, I'm pretty sure that you will have to go back to your country and then ask again for another visa, because the visa for language certificate will not allow you to look for a job in Germany or work here. So that's something that you have to also take in mind. Okay. Okay, thanks. Um, the next question is, hello, I already have a job offer from a hospital in Baden and already applied to recognition. The problem is I can't get my B1 testing due to the Goethe limited operation in my country. Can I go to Germany and get tested there? Mm, so, it also depends because, uh, as Riode said, visa procedures as well as recognition procedures, they are very individual. So I don't know from which country you are coming, like what's your nationality. Um, uh, then the question is like you don't uh, always need Goethe certificates. There are also other certificates that are accepted. So you could also check other test centers, maybe TELG, USD um, or test stuff too. Um, so these are things you should try um, maybe too and uh, you have to know that also to uh, with COVID-19 there are also like travel restrictions that from some countries you're only allowed to enter Germany with a specific reason and in a lot of cases language courses or exams um, are not part of it um, but what um, is like 
by something I would like to um, explain is that with the um, the visa for 16D, um, language classes can also be part of it. Um, but for the the visa for 16D, you need at least A2, an A2 certificate to um, get this visa. And some e uh, embassies even ask like the B1 already. Um, so sometimes you can do the language test within the 16D visa, but it's also like an individual question. Um, so I would recommend that maybe you get in touch with us so that we can take a closer look at your case too and also um, get in touch with our other departments who can also consult on the visa options so that we can find, like, take a look um, which solutions might be possible in your individual case because there are so many aspects that we have to take in consideration that we can't, like, answer it right now in this, in this talk. Okay from Marielle. Uh, I'm a registered nurse from the Philippines and not on the haven't worked on the clinical side for eight years and now she's working in Thailand. What can you advise me please because the process is still unclear to me. Um, she later clarified in the chat um, that she has moved to Thailand and is now working there in the administrative work and not in the clinical way. So um, what would you recommend for her? Um, I mean, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead. You're more in the healthcare sector. Well, well it's, <laughs> it's um, as I, I mentioned before, um, the assessment consists of an evaluation of your um, of of your training. So the training that usually takes place for three years, but it also consists of an assessment of um, your work experience. And um, uh, it also depends on the method of each competent authority. But usually, if you have a few years of work experience, it uh, can have a positive tendency on the outcome of uh, the evaluation of your training. and. Um, uh, the the recognition process so um, therefore it should be considered when applying for uh, recognition um, so I think that's what you also see Leonie or what you also wanted to tell probably or yeah well I was actually also thinking um I understood it that way that you want to um, apply for recognition as a nurse then and not um, on an administrative side. So you really want to work as a nurse um, in Germany because this is what you have. This is your formal qualification when I understood it correctly. And this is where you can apply for then um, for recognition as a nurse. And you can always hand in all your documents you have from your, from your practical experience. And if there are some parts the competent authorities can take into account Account, they will always um, compare that as well and um, put it into the equivalence process. So um, this is what I understand. You want to work as a nurse and you want to apply as a nurse. If you want to, to um, work on, on the job site, you, you would, or something similar you're doing now administrative wise. I think you have to clarify maybe with uh, yeah maybe with my colleagues from the consultancy services like ZSBA or um, yeah or yeah for example with them um, to clarify the reference professions or directly with the competent um, authority. But what is always important is um, you need this formal um, certificate, and this is what I understand um, is the one you have as a nurse, and this is then um, what you can apply for. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question is from Zabadish. Um, thanks for the informative session. My question is, could you please share the list of schools that help to the adaption course or adjustment courses? Um, so it's not uh, really possible to share this list because it's constantly evaluating. So sometimes even every week there are new schools coming or some schools uh, don't offer classes at the moment. Um, so even if we share a list now, next week already it couldn't be uh, up, 
on like updated um so what we would rather recommend is um that you really register with us because part of our consulting service is also um when you're about to choose the area um, where you would like to maybe live and work uh, we will also give you information on um, if there are adaption measures um, available at the moment so at this current time and even afterwards uh, once you have received um the um, the, the letter from the competent authority and need to do a training, we can also get you in touch um, with the schools or, as we already said, the IQ network uh, that can help you to find, um, uh, yeah, to, to find um, a suitable school or a suitable hospital, because sometimes if you just need to do the practice, practice um, then a hospital can also be um, sufficient. Um, so in this case, I would really like to recommend you get in touch with us so that we can um, give you the the up-to-date information. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, normally our webinar will be over, but there are some questions open. Do you have about 10 minutes so we can get through some, uh, through some of them? Oh, yeah, of yes. course. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question is, I'm from Pakistan, registered nurse pre-operative uh, pre business is it is it possible to have a job in nursing care home so with the job i can continue further processing for license how to admission and adaptation course um so when i understand correctly the person one or the, the candidate wants to come to germany already work and then do everything here uh, so what is really important is that um, as you're coming from pakistan uh, and I suggest that you have Pakistani nationality, you will need a visa to come to Germany. So there are just uh, two options. Either you apply for recognition, you get the, get the full equivalence directly, you have the language skills and you get the professional license, then you can work right ahead. Or if you just get the partial equivalence, then you will first need the contract for the adaption measure. So of course you can, um, it's possible to work, um, to do a side job, for example, in a nursing home, if you have time, but the main focus is going to be to do the adaption period. And then once you get the full equivalence, you will uh, be allowed to work, for example, in a nursing home. So these are the two options that I see at the moment. Um, but as I already said before, it's always <laughs> necessary to take like a close look at the documents, at the passport. There are so many criteria that we need to take into account. Yes. <laughs> Um, the next question is, I'm a registered nurse that is coming from Taiwan. Is it necessary for the nurse from non-EU countries to take the adaptation course to get full recognition or is there still the opportunity to get the full recognition directly? Um, yeah, I can answer that too. Um, so when even when you're from a non-EU country, there might be a possibility that you can get to full uh, recognition, but it doesn't happen often in, in, in my experience, which is of course limited since we are full opera fully operational since two years. And um, I'm not sure what the experience of my colleagues is, but um, I advise uh, to our clients, or I usually tell my clients that they have to ex uh, expect uh, a partial recognition and therefore the necessity to attend a, um, a, a, a training course. Um, I don't know if, if you ever had an experience with someone coming from a non-European country, Jana, who got the full recognition? Um, um, very few, but there are also I've got to repeat me again, there's so many yeah, criteria because it also case, depends yeah. if you maybe studied on an academic level, then how many years did you work? So I saw a few cases from non-European countries where a okay. full recognition, a full equivalence was granted and they were able to get the, the license directly. Um, but as you said, I also tell my clients, expect partial equivalence and yeah. then when you get the full equivalence, it's like a, a present a surprise and it's better to like expect it this way expect the worst and then have the better outcome than to expect the better outcome and then you're maybe <laughs> disappointed so this is uh, what That's i a German approach <laughs> 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 yeah okay thank you for the clarification 
Um, the next question is, I'm Anna, a doctor from Ecuador. I already have a spot for a hospitation. Since there's no specific visa for hospitation, what option would you recommend for me? Not that easy. Hospitation. She, have a, she has a spot for a hospitation. Um, but there is no specific visa, but I think she maybe. So maybe just an, uh, kind of internship, maybe. So in the... Yeah, maybe. Mm. We can't hear you, from uh, to, uh, to this question, I would say uh, to take contact with uh, the German embassy. I think mm. they are the, the best to answer your question so that they can exactly tell you which kind of visa you can apply for. Because you are not coming in Germany as a doctor in order to work here in Germany as a doctor, but you want to make an hospitalization, maybe more like an internship. So I don't know exactly how it works, but uh, I think it's better to take um, contact with the German embassy in Ecuador, and they will probably give you the, the best uh, answers. Yeah, I think that you, yeah. they sh uh, she sh um, should ask the embassy directly. Um, I think we are at the end now of the Q&A session. I think I will uh, close it. Um, yes, thank you all to the audience for all your really interesting questions. And um, this webinar will be re recorded and be uploaded on our YouTube channel from uh, Make It in Germany. I think you can see it next week. Um, just check it regularly. Mm -hmm. And again, thank you to our experts for yeah, all the interesting insights and tips on the whole recognition procedure. Uh, it's not that easy, but I think you made a really good point and showed us how to uh, start the process. Thank you from my side. Thank you also from my side and uh, see you next time. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.